We're going to talk about Salem's Lot real quick. That's on HBO Max. Rob Zilla, what would you think? Did you watch a PBS? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I liked it. Fire away, guys. I liked it, but I feel like with that, they kind of, I feel like the way they cut it, they cut some important stuff out or something about it, way they cut it. I feel like that's a show that needs to be like six episodes of a series to go more in depth with it. It's just, they seem like they know the vampire a little bit. Like, like we, we can't do nothing about it. Like, what the fuck happened? Like, this all of a sudden, and people just start disappearing, but there's no in-depth of the character. But I like the vampires. Um, if you... I feel like if you watch Midnight Mass, you can feel that Salem's Lot was really inspired for Midnight Mass and how the vampires looked and the eyes and so forth. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, it was I, inspired. You do you do realize there was an original Salem's Lot, right? Yes, I'm saying for Midnight Mass. Okay, they were inspired yeah. for Salem's Lot. Uh, as far as as far as them taking the things, yeah, the the, yeah, yes. Uh, Midnight Mass definitely does Salem's Lot. I think better than this movie does Salem's Lot. Yeah. <laughs> which is what Rob is trying okay, to say. Also. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, what is he talking about? <laughs> Rob, you're supposed to be like, fuck you, dude. No, it's, I just got to be better. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't, don't, don't do that. Rob's very masochistic. Hit, hit me again. <laughs> Spit in my face. Show me some abuse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so carry on. But. No, that's it. <laughs> no, yeah, speak your mind, man. But I did like the I did like the cast. Um, I mentioned before Lewis Pullman. I think he's he's up and coming, so he's going to hit it big. But I thought his role was really good. I felt like they could have done a little bit more of his backstory, um, a little bit because they kind of hinted at it, but don't really reason why he comes back to say to do some research. But <laughs> he's feels something more there, but. <laughs> We just got our sound clip for the for this episode. What are you talking about? <laughs> Go ahead, PBS. All right, so here I, I brought my prop for the for the episode. Here's my my hardback copy of uh, Salem's Lot. Okay, I think it's just a book club edition, so it's nothing special or anything. But I got into kind of looking for Stephen King uh, hardbacks kind of during the uh, pandemic ish. I'm like, eh, all right, some of them are easier to find than others. And that one, that one, I don't remember how much so it cost me to be 20 or 30 bucks. So it's not too bad. So, um, I hate to say it, but I'm mostly with Rob Zilla on this one. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think about it in two ways. I'm trying to think of, about it as an, as an adaptation of the book and as a movie on its own, as an adaptation, it's really like a cliff notes version of the book. And they do change some stuff. They change sort of where the finale happens and all that. So on that, on the one hand, I, I kind of don't like that. But on the other hand, I'm trying to not judge the movie by that. I know you've only seen, uh, Rob hasn't seen it yet, but you've seen the original TV uh, miniseries yeah. version. Yeah. Which I think sticks closer to the book. So obviously this is this is under two hours. I was, I was curious to see how long it was going to be. And honestly, it probably should have been like another half hour longer, really. It's only like 140 or 50, some kind of minutes. And they really do kind of cut out too much. Like there's there's definitely characters you could cut out like the uh, Ben Mears is coming back to Salem's lot because he wants to do a book on the Marsden house. They don't really tell you too much about it other than that that's what he's doing. Yeah. But like when he comes back looking for an apartment, the guy who runs the realty office, Larry Crockett, he's having an affair with his secretary and a secretary is married to a truck driver and all that. And they, they basically cut all that out. That's fine. I, I don't think you needed that to make the movie. So I'm OK with that stuff. But I do. They cut out like. um uh, uh, I don't remember if it's in the book or not that Ben Mears' parents were killed in a car crash, but I almost thought they were going to be like, oh, Ben Mears as a child was going to the Marsden house and maybe his parents were out looking for him and got killed while he was at the Marsden house and it was going to like play back into something like that's his obsession with the Marsden house. Right, right. They, they didn't go there. I thought that's kind of where they were heading with that. And I, I it could have used more of that. I love uh, Susie was good. Yeah. I think in the in the original story, she's a teacher but in this one she's just trying to get a real estate license and all that's fine uh the the uh, i forget his name already the old teacher who helps him out i liked him too could have used some more of him with some more backstory uh and i love uh, alfrey woodard as the doctor she was she was maybe like my favorite character and the and the uh the guy who plays mark petrie the young boy yeah they were good i yeah. liked the characters i wish i wish they just had a little bit more to do it was definitely like a very sort of rapid fire edit in places they start 
with uh, the guy going to get the coffin and moving it into the basement. That really happens a little bit into the story. And they put it right at the beginning to sort of jump into it. Same with like the Glick boys going through the forest and they get kidnapped by the vampire or Straker or whichever. And it was just, that, that's my big problem with it. It's just, they could have maybe given me another, and you know me, I'm the, I'm the 90 minutes guy anymore. Yeah. yeah. They could have given me like another 20 minutes and let it breathe a little more. And I think it would have made it a lot better just to not make it quite so rapid fire or they should have cut out even more maybe and, and found a way to make it even, even quicker. I do like that. I, I love the performances. I like a lot of the atmosphere. They really did sort of transform this town and put up like facades and signs and all that that looked like the 1970s. I thought it was a little over processed in a lot of the scenes, like all almost all the scenes looked like they had had been fiddled with to make it cloudy or make it look kind of bright in a, in a, in a funky way. I didn't really like that. There's a few shots that were just like nice natural shots and they looked like kind of like the seventies movies and all that. That's pretty good. Yeah. And the, um, like, uh, Rob says the vampires, uh, the scene where the glick boy floats up to the window and goes after Mark Petrie is a famous scene from the first one. I thought they did it pretty well on this one too. It's like really foggy and the vampires got like these shiny eyes and it's like, damn, that's, that's pretty creepy. Yeah. yeah. I did enjoy how they look with the eyes and it's very, uh, and the, uh, and the vampire Barlow, they, they kept him in sort of the Nosferatu weird looking guy. I think in the book and in like the nineties mini series, he just looked like an old European guy. I think, yeah. I think in the nineties series, it's actually played by Donald Sutherland, maybe. So I like that they kind of kept the Nosferatu guy. So I like that. I don't, how I don't, many Salem's lots are there now? Three now. Is there three? Yeah. The, 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 well, there's one from the early 2000s in there with Rob Lowe. Yeah. That's 90s or 2000s. Okay. Whatever it is, yeah. And, and then this, this movie. So um, it's kind of like my uh, uh, Beetlejuice review. Like, man, I'm frustrated because I think it's all here. Like, I like a lot of stuff about it. And I think they just kind of had to cut out way too much. I liked it. Uh, I thought they captured the the spirit of the first one. Um, some of the, you know, like you talked about the the scene with the little boy floating up to the window, and the the that was the charm of the original Salem's Lot was like how creepy everything was, and I mean some of the uh, way they shot some of the scenes was like really beautiful. I thought, yeah, cinematography uh, is really good. Like the part where they're out in the the woods, like that, that, yeah, that, that was really great, good. The scene where they get kidnapped, that was I, I was watching you, how they did that, and it was really. And you good. just kind of see the silhouette yeah, of the of kids, the forest. yeah, like that was really cool. I thought yeah, that was maybe 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 the best scene in the movie. I kind of think, and you know the the part where he runs out of the church mm -hmm. to kind of go after uh, whoever got Susan or whatever, yeah. Like that was uh, that was really cool because, you know, he's looking around and then all of a sudden there's all these vampires on top of the building. And you're like, whoa, this dude's toast. Yeah, that, like, <laughs> um, when they're standing like that, like 30 days of night where they're just waiting. On yeah, the, on I the mean, roofs. I here's my biggest issue with the film in general is I wish they would have done their own thing with it mm -hmm. and not necessarily taken it back to the 70s or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I wish it would have been more modern day which I'm fine with them keeping it close to the original the way they did, but I wish they would have just done just, if you're going to remake it, just go a different direction. You know, the thing for me is like Salem's lot is like a seventies, eighties vibe. So is the shine and that kind of thing, but it, it's getting harder to do that stuff. You know, like think about it when we grew up in the eighties and even nineties, like if you set a movie in the fifties and you made it in the eighties, it was 30 years away. Yeah. If you're making an eighties movies now or a seventies movie, that's, that's, 40 and going on 50 years old and and like so they always have to like overly process it and all that and like i'm, I'm kind of with you. i i like that they tried to do it for the 70s but it may have been a little easier and better if they had just kind of gone modern day i know? appreciate like i appreciate what they did you know i felt like they were kind of catering to the stephen king fans and that's fine they were trying I yeah think they were really trying yeah yeah you, you, i think they did the best they could probably given you know the we all know that this movie wasn't supposed to see the light of day. It didn't seem like, yeah. but uh, I really wish they would have had, you know, like you said, give us an extra half hour. And that's a movie that can be played in the movie theater. It's not just a, a streaming title, but um, like my biggest complaint is just wishing they would have done something on their own as far as just not, 
because i mean it's pretty much it's spot on with the original minus a few things like you talked about like we don't know that the the real estate agents having an affair right. with what's her face and, and like I said, we don't really need to know yeah. that no you don't add flavor to that really. I, I feel like it worked for what they were trying to accomplish um and listen it, Salem's Lot is so beloved that I don't think you're going to please everybody with a remake, oh, yeah. regardless of which direction you go in. So I, I felt like they did the best they could with already having their backs against the wall. Uh, but like I said, great cinematography. And the the movie is a creepy movie. And I thought they did a good job of making it even more creepier than the original. But uh, it's it's a fun movie. And I think it embodies spooky season. So... I you know I I had fun watching it. I'm not gonna say yeah. it, it's not the best movie. It was fun. Uh, is there things that could have been you know better about it? Sure, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Yeah, I and, mean it's not a horrible movie by all means. But no, it's no, still, no. It's a fun it's good, movie. It's a good movie. I gave it three and a half stars. I don't know what you guys. Gave I gave it three. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Three. So we're kind of right in the same ballpark. And the I didn't only, hate it or anything. The yeah. only reason why I gave it a three and a half was because of the the vibe they gave, and some of the stuff just really resonated with me. Like I talked about the the scene in the woods and yeah. uh, the nighttime scenes. Like when he, in I, one thing I did like is they showed the vampires hypnotizing them. Yeah. So that was kind of cool because you don't see a whole lot of that in vampire mm-hmm. stuff anymore. No. But uh, it, you know, the uh, how about the crosses? Oh, I, I like I like the is look that of that. in the book how they glow like that. I, I don't remember if it was really like that. Right. I don't think the they they did that in the original. Did they? I don't think so. Yeah. The cross is still working on that, but it didn't like body. Well, they just kind of like saw it and they were like, ah. yeah. it's like glows <laughs> yeah. like it's a no. That was like light, which is interesting. I was I was really waiting for somebody to be like, may the power of Christ or uh, Christ compel you. <laughs> yeah. I like the guy like I revoke my invitation. Yeah, that was cool. And he went yeah. fl- flying out the house like that was cool. I really liked that dude that played the uh, the teacher. Yeah, I felt like they did him dirty. They did. But uh, the final uh, like it's act his, uh, was pretty cool. Like how Bill they were Camp is his name. Matthew Burke. Yeah. Uh, teacher Burke. I really like that final act, though, where they're they're yeah. trying to get to the main vampire before it turns dark and they're at the drive ins and all these motherfuckers are sleeping in there. That, that was the cool change. Yeah. That's yes. really cool. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean like the things that they did kind of go away with worked. I mean, that was cool. There is uh <laughs> where are you at Danny? How, <laughs> did you, did anybody else find the, the caretaker to the vampire really cheesy? Yeah. Like how, how is it possible that they got even cheesier than the original guy? Yeah, James, <laughs> James Mason was pretty, you know, British accent and very, you know, European. suave uh, at times. And then at other times he's speaking and you don't hear the British accent. And You're the like, guy who played him, Stryker, was he's a good actor. He's from Game of Thrones. And why did the vampire need to have a kid as the sacrifice? Is it maybe because the kid was easier to yeah, kidnap? Because it's, it's easier, maybe, maybe <laughs> pure or something like that. There is, I, a, was, I was happy to see William Sadler though, as the, oh, yeah, as as the, the cop who didn't want to do shit. Yeah, <laughs> he was cool. Trouble means I got to work. There is. Like work. Um, <laughs> Look, master, I brought you a sacrifice. <laughs> There's a, a moment in the finale where uh, a character gets taken out. I don't want to give it away because it was really funny. <laughs> I and, was shocked. <laughs> and when, when, a, when a certain character gets taken out in a certain way. And I was I was I was I was watching this at like 1230 or 1130 at home with a popcorn. I was like, yeah, get that bitch. <laughs> so I thought that's like it. It did. Um, one thing that's in a lot of Stephen King books and movies is sort of this idea that places are evil or bad things are drawn to certain places. Right. And that wasn't in here so much. I just kind of missed that. And I, I almost wish they'd have made it like a zombie movie where like, cause the idea is that like slowly over some time, these people, are, the whole town is turning into vampires. Yeah. And I almost wish they'd have made it like a zombie movie. Like, Oh, there's a few less people in town today. Where, are, where, why is the post office closed today? And then a couple of days later, I was like, oh, the grocery store is closed today. Where's that person at? I, I, I kind of wish they had done something like that. Maybe. That's one thing that like Thirty Days of Nights does, even though it's not, uh, you know, uh, necessarily uh, different stages mm-hmm. of that. That you know, people eventually start getting eaten up by all these like, vampires. Oh and- yeah, he he went home. He was sick today. And it becomes a survival thing. You don't really feel that survivalness from this. Like, yeah. you just feel like they're going to make it eventually. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's just too rushed. That's my that's my biggest yeah. complaint. Yeah, I mean, they really did. Like, oh, this is the end of the movie here. 
they just cut <laughs> out like there's things in the original that I love. Like uh, you're talking about the uh, the uh, the guy who works in the graveyard, Mike. Like in in the original '70s one, he like there's this great scene where he like jumps down in the grave. Yeah, and it's like really creepy. In in the original, it's not quite as like exaggerated in this one. And then like he he the teacher invites him back, and he's like turning into a vampire in his room, and it's really creepy in the yeah. in the seventies in the seventies version. And this one, he just kind of turns into the vampire. Like yeah, I missed some of that stuff. They missed an adaptation. They missed stuff. a couple of marks on that where they had great opportunities to really make it a great great horror movie, and they just missed on that or didn't have the ability to do it. Or something. Yeah, I, I, I feel like they were kind of. There's something tells me they were a little strapped just because, you know, now that we're talking about it and I'm thinking about all the different things like, yeah, it is a very heavily cut movie. I, I wonder if there's like a longer version out there. There has to be. I would love somewhere. to see. I would love to see a director's cut of that. Bring back the director's cut, Scott. Yeah, damn it. An extended cut, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I'll say I'll say real quick. I still want the one thing I want is uh, the Stephen King. Uh, we've talked about this before a little bit. Stephen King short story collection Night Shift. There's two stories in there. Uh, I think the first one's called Jerusalem's Lot, and it's a prequel. And then there's one called One for the Road, which is a sequel. And in the sequel, like this guy's driving his family during a snowstorm, and they get lost and they get stuck. And he leaves his wife and kids in a car, and he like walks to this bar that's miles away, and, like to the snowstorm going on. This, and the guys, there's a couple of guys in the bar just kind of shooting the shit. And the the guy walks into the bar and says, "Hey, my car got stuck off the road." Blah blah blah. And and he's like, can you come help me with my family? Whatever. And they go, so he goes to the bartender. He's like, well, where's it at? It's like, I don't know. We turned into some town called Jerusalem's Lot. And the guys at the bar are like, oh, shit. Because they know there's vampires. Yeah, there. They yeah. know. And then they take the guy back to the car and deal with all that. I, I would love for someone to make that into like a 90-minute a or less even movie. I think like a John Carpenter straight straight ahead kind of style would have been I, really I feel cool. like they're missing the mark here with the Stephen King connected worlds. Like we could be having like a Avengers type right, you know, horror movie. Well, that, and that's kind of the Dark Tower yeah. stuff too that Mike Flanagan is working on. So I, I just, I don't think, I don't know if enough, I don't know if one studio owns enough rights to do something like that or yeah. if they even want to really. Just make it happen. But that's like if like if I hit the lottery for like a hundred million dollars or something that's like that, you're gonna get. <laughs> I would I would like here's five or ten million dollars. Make me this movie or something. Right.